on the pillow? More shoulder. More shoulder. More skin. <laughs> Hmm? Just have to trip the shutter? I guess uh, the way this one works. Let's see what happens there. Nope. I've never used a Polaroid back on here, so I've got to figure out what makes it work. Got the dark slide out, but uh, the camera don't want to go here. Well, who knows anything about a Polaroid back on the RZ? Where's your dark slide? Dark slide's back here. Where? Hand the dark slide right behind you there, Al, laying right behind Al. Put it on manual or something? There we go. What, what do you got it on now? Okay, on this we may have to plug into this lens here because this. Uh, Right over here. No, no, take off the power back. How come you're not getting any flash? I don't know. Because you know which one. Because your PC cord isn't plugged into here. Well, we should, it should work both places there. Is this hot shoot? Yeah. I've got another piece. No, no. Okay, just so you can turn it once again. Okay, now maybe we're in business. You're alive. You're alive. Now pull your dark side. Now we'll see what happens. Now we'll see if we got an image. Pull that one. Okay, and then pull straight out. There you go. Okay, let's see what happens on that. Thank you. Anytime you come to a program, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. And, and if you don't have all your own equipment, it never works like you work at home. And I'm the world's worst technician to start with. So we've had a little minor technology problems, I guess, or electronics problems. But we usually get things working. First of all, we're going to, to show you basically what we do, then we're going to end up, we'll actually do some photographing for the models. We'll do some different poses and, and so forth. But when I photograph, let me give you what I do. Normally, I work with this light and a reflector. It's a super silver reflector just like this. But in this room, I don't think that I would get the same thing that I get in my camera room because it's a lot smaller. But this is what I normally work with, one light and reflector like this. Here we're going to try using two lights because there's not a whole lot of bounce around here. The walls are way away, and I think I'd really get in trouble. We'll probably have less ratio here than what we normally use at home. But we'll see what happens on that Polaroid. Has it come up yet? Was our exposure about right? Yep. Just fine. Just fine. Oh, okay. So it's all, we're close enough to, to use the Polaroid. Okay. 
How's our ratio of light? Oh, okay. I don't know if we've got a model in here yet or not, have we? Nope, okay. We'll go ahead without the model for the time being. I use a twin size bed. I better ask this, so I'll go ahead and clarify. I use a twin size bed. I use it at a higher, about this height. This happens to be one of these tables. Uh, I take a box spring and a regular mattress, a very firm mattress, and then I build a two by six frame, the height six inches high, and I put my box spring on that and my mattress on that. That's to get it up higher so you're not bending down all day long. Your back will get very tired if you're bending over and you spend a lot of time bending over because you have a lot of different posing to do. So I do use a twin size bed. I, as I said, I use only one light and a reflector. I use a Harrison and Harrison diffuser number five more than anything else. When someone tells you what they diffuse with, always ask them what ratio of light they're working with because uh, Harrison Harrison number five filter with a one to two lighting that most people use for portraits will mush to pieces. You cannot use a Harrison number five unless you use an extreme ratio of lighting because you're, you're going to just go to mush. If you use about a one to four and a half, one to five ratio of lighting, then you'll come back to about a one by two. So when you're talking about diffusers, it always makes the difference between the ratio of lighting that you're using or whether you're using soft focus lens, it doesn't make any difference. Soft focus or diffusers, what it does, it takes away the shadow. It blends into the, the highlights into the shadow. That's what happens when you're diffusing. Your highlight stays basically the same, but you blend it over into the shadows or mush it into the shadows and you lose your shadows. And so if you have a very slight ratio of lighting and you put a diffuser in, it just, you end up with mush. If you're using high key, don't use a very strong diffuser because it'll mush because you don't have, the again, the ratio of light. If I'm using high key, I go down to number three Harrison and Harrison uh, filter. I have all kinds of things from, I have soft focus lens, I have a Verito lens, I have a, the RB soft focus lens, uh, I have a Amagon soft focus, I have probably every diffuser on the market and I go through periods where I like this and I like that and so forth. I end up always coming back to the Harrison Harrison number five filter. That's personal preference, yes. Well, Harrison and Harrison has a lot of filters. They got this uh, regular uh, filter and then they have the black dot. Which do you use and prefer? I use the regular one. The black dot does not mush as easy, but it's not soft enough for me. Okay. But the black dot will give you a, a nicer diffusion for regular portraits where you're, you're not working for the degree of softness that I'm working for. Harrison Harrison has a lot of different filters. If you've never worked with their low contrast filters, you'll find that you can do some beautiful, beautiful things with low contrast. Not many people are aware of that. Let me see if, I think I've got something here I can show you with low contrast. Just a second here. If I've got a briefcase sitting around, someone see a briefcase? No, it's black. Someone find my briefcase for me and, and uh, I'll show you something on. Right behind that chair. Yeah, here it is, over here. Here it is. When this is over, you can come up and see these, but let me give you an idea. This is done on the enlarger. It is, you can use it on the lens or you can use it on the enlarger. I've got to get these. This is a normal print. I don't know how many of you can see that and see the sharpness. Is that too far away to see the sharpness of it? Anyway, you can go from that to this. The pastel, like the Breck hair ads that you admire so much, that's done simply with low contrast fillers. I don't see if you can see the difference or not. That's Harrison, Harrison low contrast filters can be used on the enlarger or on your camera, either one. Does that mean if I screw up and forget to put the filter in the slot, I can have the... Uh, the lab do it, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If they have Harrison, Harrison low contrast filters. So if I just send one over to them, they can... If, if you send, uh, send them low contrast filter uh, over, they could use that. But there's a difference between 
the normal and uh, the number four. It makes a very, very pretty effect, but Harrison Harrison makes lots and lots of fillers, but you can see these whenever we uh, break here, and we'll be around for a while. We're supposed to break at five, but I'm sure we'll be around if you have questions and so forth while we're packing. You can look things over. We have a model back here now. Both of them are ready, okay. Bring either one of them up and tell me who's, who's what. This is Rhonda, people. Okay, Rhonda, if you'll just have a seat right here for me. Just scoot up there and have a seat. As I told you, when I start out, I always, so I come down, Dolores will have the gal sitting on a bed like that, and I immediately come in here and I get these two pillows. I'm interspaced and I get out of it. That gives her a successful experience. I do that religiously, and that does help to relax the gal. So we take those away first of all. I've been into her space and I've been out. So <coughs> as a as a transaction or or, or uh, whatever you want to call it, she is she has now had someone come in and walk away from her, and nothing happened. She didn't get hurt. Now I'm going to have you slide up on the bed about right here. Throw your legs up to this side, please. There we go. Just let your legs drop over this way. Now I'm going to have you just lean back on this arm. Roll your hips a little bit toward me. That's fine. Let this leg drop back and bring this leg forward. There we go. That's fine. Just let this arm come forward. Now, wait a minute. If I was doing high fashion, more sexy type things, I would leave this shoulder back here because you can get more of that sexiness. I don't do that. I bring this arm around and make it more of a classical. Because women in the 35-year-old age that have the money to spend don't want to be fashion models. They want to be beautiful. Big, big difference. There's been two people in our town that has come in and said, Dale, I'm sure glad you made this photographing women with nothing on popular. Now I can go in and do what I want to do. And so they come in, they try to be fashion photographers, and they last about six months, and they go broke. People will not spend money for that. The high school senior wants to be a fashion model, but she ain't got the money. So you don't do fashion poses. You do more of a classical. Just kind of roll your body just a little bit more and let this leg come up right there. Look right out at me and kind of lean your head just the least little bit. That's fine. Very, very good. I would start out with a pose similar to that. And let's see if we can do a Polaroid of that and see what happens. I, I'm hesitant on this Polaroid deal, but I don't meter my lights each time. I work about the same distance, a comfortable distance, and so forth. It's a little different to me in here because we've got, can we kill some of these other lights so we can see our lights? That would help a whole lot. This first time you've been out in front of this many people, no clothes on? <laughs> well, see, so you've experienced something I never have. <laughs> Lean your head just a little bit. Let this hand just relax. Let your hand come down just about right there. That's fine. Very good. Just kind of that so. That's fine. Let this shoulder relax a little bit. We're a little bit stiff. There we go. Eyes right back out at me. Now, if you if you look at this light, watch what it does. You see how the light's coming off of her legs? You see that? I'm exaggerating, but. I would work my light about like that. Now, we've got the light coming in. This is hard to do without, uh, with you're not used to this, so I'm going to turn this off so you can really see. Now, if you watch what this light does, you see how you can feather it off the legs? Now, if you had a, a broad light source, it would give you this effect. With this, you can feather it off and you keep, you keep the center of attention right here. Now, if you, if you see that, that's what you're going to get. And when you send that to the lab, it doesn't need printed in, it doesn't need burned in, it doesn't need anything. Because you've got more light hitting your face, and this area here, it's falling off of the legs. Now, let's see if that shows up on the Polaroids. We'll try to expose a Polaroid here and see what happens. And I use a zoom lens for the RZ camera, and if you're using RBs or RZs or whatever, and you're not using the zoom, it's the most fantastic thing that 
you could ever use because I'm never that far back. I feel like I'm a mile away from my subject. Stay just as you are. I'm going to bring this elbow out just a little bit and just kind of roll just a little. That's better. Now again, let this shoulder relax. There we go. Eyes right out at me. That's fine. Very good. Now let's see what our, our Polaroid is going to do for us here. That's so. I want to zoom and I won't zoom. I reached up to zoom and that's fine. Right there, lower your chin just a little bit. Eyes right back toward me. If you can hear me, I guess you can. Well, I got the mic on, don't I? Forget about that. But that's fine. I always use some sort of a prop to balance and balance space. I use a lot of flowers. But we've got a flower here in the foreground. Foreground props give you dimension. They're great to use. And so we're going to go with that about like that and see what happens with this. Polaroid, if we got everything right, we'll get something. And gosh, you look so serious. I may have to take this over. That's fine. We didn't get a flash for some reason, gosh. Everything's going great today. Let's see what we have got hooked up here. Let's see what happens this time. Very, very good. Yeah. Murphy's, law. Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Let's try it there and see what happens. That, that sheet will be exposed good, won't it? I know one way to solve the problem. Let's take this thing off of here and stay as you are. See if this works here. Patience is a virtue. That's why I read me. Now something something's not working that in uh, No, no, that was me. I didn't turn it on. We we may have to go to it, but I think it'll be all right now. Let's see what happens with that. There, please. No, there's no. somebody else over there. No. Oh. Okay, wait a minute. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. We'll we'll see what comes out of this sheet and then we'll make one of this. <laughs> it's got enough it's got enough available light on it that we ought to have some. Be patient, we're gonna do another one here real quick for us. Something else drops lower each in just the least eyes right back at me and give that come here there look. That's what I want. That's fine. That's what expression wise, I try to work for uh, more of a seductive expression than smiles. There are some gals that can't smile, and, and then we'll see what we get on that. All expression, whether it's of a child or adult or so forth, comes from the corners of your mouth, not from the eyes. The corners of your mouth is what co causes all expression to happen. As the corners of the mouth if, you, if a person is angry, the corners of the mouth will turn down slightly. The longer you hold your lips, you can relax. The longer you hold your lips closed, the more the corners of the mouth will turn down. When you have someone moisten their lips or something, all that does is relax the muscles around the mouth, the corners of the mouth go straight across. As you tease or so forth, the corners of the mouth start to raise. As they start to raise, the cheeks also rise. As the cheeks rise, the eyes become smaller. That's how all expression happens, and that's how you get your expression. Simply by what happens with the corners of the mouth. I watch the corners of the mouth in everything that I take. That's what I'm more interested in. We've got something on the screen over there. So we'd, how's the exposure and everything? Working? Very nice. Good. OK. Now, I would do a, that would be one of the first poses I would do and so forth. And I'd also do a mood uh, type of thing. And I would just lean over again, back it out right here. Let this arm, that's fine. Let this leg drop. Give me this knee again. Roll your hips toward me this way. Come on down so this knee will touch. Just roll your hips. There we go, right about there. Look right out at me and lean your head just slightly this way. It'll be as far as it can go. I'm going to bring this elbow out from underneath you just a little bit. There we go. Turn your head toward me as far as you can. Lean your head just a little and look down about right through here. Now, she can't turn her head very far. That don't mean something's wrong with you. Just stay as you are. And I have my table on wheels. 
so I can turn her so that she's looking down. Now, just if you look down with your eyes about right through here, that's fine. And I make a study about in this area right here, that's fine. And now, watch with my light what happens. If you do this, what happens when you raise and lower? Watch your hip. See, her face is staying about the same, but what's happening to her hip? See how it works? On that Polaroid, did it show the fall off of light? Anyway, lower your chin and look down about right through here. I would make this about right here. The nice thing about using a reflector is I can put my reflector right here on this, and someone, if they'll hold this about right here, someone hold this for me. This keeps that light from hitting the camera. You hold it about right there. Now watch, watch her face, what happens with the reflector. You see that little bit of difference? That's actually all you're doing with a reflector. I would use my reflector about right there, if you'll hold that about right there. Lower your chin just a little bit, look down about my hand right about here. That's fine, that's so. And I would make one about right there, about like so. What does our other model have on? Okay, I'm not going to shoot too many of these on the Polaroid. We would make that exposure, then we would have you just slide off the table and stand about right here, only I'm going to switch models. And you can, you can have a stand or a seat over there. And this is Susan. Normally I wouldn't be switching gals in the middle of the stream, but the next pose that I would make, I want you to come up and have a seat about like this. And I make this pose for a reason. I'm still in the relaxing state of getting the model comfortable with me. And when she's seated like this, I have her lean slightly this way, right about there. Let this arm stretch just the least little bit. I kneel down, and I'm very much in her space. This is uncomfortable for, for me to be here with her. But I kneel down in this space, and I'll adjust a little bit and so forth. And then I get the heck out of her space. But I again have come into her space, and now I've made her uncomfortable. She's now relaxed. And from this point on, generally speaking, she'll feel comfortable with me. That one move will help you immensely as far as relaxing. Turn your head toward me just the least little bit. Lean your head just a little. Eyes back about right through here. That's fine. I would again light her about like this, and I'm tipping the light just slightly. And let's turn this and back off so we can see what we're doing. Now, if you notice again, you can see the distinct fall off of light. You can't do this with a broad light source. You have to have these pro strip banks. But you see the gradation of light, how it goes down? You send that to the lab. You don't have to have it custom printed. Do you? Yes. Do you use any kind of video in front of them? No. Just the fall off of light. Do you know that all labs do a better job printing machine prints than they do custom prints? They may not admit it, but they do. They do because they can't manipulate. They can't give you your, give you their interpretation. They only produce what you put there. And machine prints are more even and uniform than custom prints. So it's up to you to get, get it on the negative and get machine prints. You save a lot of money. And in the long run, over the period of time, you'll have much better quality. OK, turn your head just the least little bit this way, Susan. Lower your chin a little. Turn your head right about there. When you're directing your model, keep your hands like this. See how your hands are? If you say tip your head and do this, they will automatically do exactly what you want. Just all you have to do is this. You should always direct your model. If you touch your model, touch her and do it and move her and just be very bold about it. And she'll think nothing of it. Turn your head just slightly. There we go. That's uh, I like to work. See, we can't do this vertical, can we? You can't turn this. Okay. There we go. We're back in business, and this will have to be a horizontal instead of a vertical. But uh, I do not focus through the filter. I always raise my filter to focus. I, I photograph at f8 instead of 5.6. I like 5.6 better, but I'm old enough that it's easier to, to get them sharp at f8 than it is 5.6. <laughs> 
eyes right back out at me. That's what I'll come out a little bit more. I'll come up there. That's great. Very good. And I want him to smile on that one. At this point, oh, we've got to pull this thing. At this point, we would then go to the dressing room and we would discuss albums and so on and so on and so on and so on. And after that point, she comes back. Generally, your model is relaxed enough then that you can do just about anything you want. But those few can relax if you haven't. Those few steps make it easy. Let's have you stand again. We're going to do another pose here while we got you here in this outfit. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I would maybe do something with this this type of gown I use with the more shy people are if a gal is doing it for a wedding. We do a lot of things for uh, for weddings as a wedding gift. This gown kind of reminds me of a wedding, but uh, we would have her come out and do something here. I'd probably have a, another prop, a taller plant or something about in this area to balance your composition. If you look at the prints, if there's no flower, there's nothing to balance. All the plants are to balance composition. If you leave a big empty gap in your prints, the, it doesn't look right. So you need something to balance. This particular one would need something taller in here. You come over this way, babe. Just turn a little bit back, just at least a little bit. Turn a little bit to this side, so you know, right about there. Now I'm going to turn you this way. I make up my mind when I'm kind of like a woman. There we go. Let this hand just relax and just touch. There we go. That's great. Let this hand come over and just touch about right here. That's fine. Just about right there. Put your weight on your back hip. Now I'll show you a trick. Anytime, every woman. Not well, there's exceptions to every rule. Every woman has a little bit of a stomach. I never ask anyone to hold their breath in because it changes all the chest muscles. So what you do, and like this, now she doesn't have that, but most, most women will have just a little pooch, especially when you're using a real silk type of material. To, to alleviate that, what you do is have her stand on her back foot, and I'm losing a dealy bob here. And you know, I know you got a leg down there. There we go. Take your weight off of this foot, raise it up, and just touch your toe. See what she's doing there? She's just touching her toe. She's taking the weight off of the front foot, and you let this come up. And when you let this come up, this brings the gown out enough that you get rid of that little pooch of a stomach that all gals have. We're waiting on the camera here. No. Looking at it from camera angle, it just it just it makes it look pretty. That's fine. You could probably get by with her without doing that, but but no, it just looks it just looks very pretty. That's fine. Turn your head toward me a little bit more, a little bit more. Lean your head. Turn your head just the least, and drop her hair just back a little bit so you clear her chin. Lower your chin just a little bit. Look down about right through here with your eyes. And you bring your main light source over here. And I would light it about like that. And let's see if we're seeing fall off. Yep, see we've got you need to be a little bit stronger up above here, just at least a little bit. Very good. Eyes right out at me. Just with your eyes. Lean your head just a little bit. Now look down with your eyes. That's fine. And I would do one looking down about like that. And this thing should work without the turn that modeling light on, I think. So we'll just leave it like that and see what happens. Beautiful. Very, very good. Susan, don't move anything yet, but I'd like to have you lean your head a little bit more and lower your chin. Just, that's great. Very good. My reflector on this particular one would be about right here. 
and you t always feather your reflector toward the camera. See how you feather toward the camera with a reflector. Your reflector should be as close to the camera axis as possible without being in your picture. Never use a reflector like this or like this. A lot of people get the reflector back too far. Your reflector has to be forward enough that you get more light out here than you do back at the back. If you get more light to the back, you create a hollow trap down the front of your lighting. So your reflector would be out here feathering so you get the brightest part from the reflector on the side of the face, not on the body. Yeah, it's all right. It's because it's got an automatic winder on it. That's fine. That's well. Look down with your eyes, please. That's great, Susan. Just moisten your lips real good, and that just relaxes them. Let them close real softly. That's fine. At least a little bit more. Maybe I have to tease you just a uh, bit. There. We got too much on it. I got too much on that expression, but I, was, I watched the corners of the mouth, and it got a little bit too high on me. Yeah, I'll pull that thing. I'm not used to doing that. Now. I would make that pose and I would have her look right back at me, lean your head again just at least a little bit, turn your head right here, and I'd make one looking back at me, eyes back over here beside the camera right here now, and make another one, okay? Then, without moving anything, I would have her turn this way, turn a little bit more, let this come up this way in just a second here. And this is a little bit tall for you. And this is important. When you have them sit on something, always get a little slack. Now just sit up on that hip. Lean over on this elbow. Let this hand just go natural. That's fine. Very, very good. And so turn your head this way toward me. Right about there. Look down with your eyes. That's eyes right back out at me. Always get that hair so it doesn't make a crowded look around her face and look down with her eyes again. I'd get her to look down. If this was for a bride, I would have her with this hand, raise her fingers about right here, bring this hand over about right here. Just let me have your hand. Just come in right there like that. Hold that hand right there. Bring this hand up so your fingers are right there. And I would put his ring, or a ring that I have in the studio on her fingers, and then have her looking down at it. Yes. And if that's for a wedding gift to the groom, he, she'll love that. Then, I just let this hand drop. Let this hand drop back about right here. Always keeping your arm relaxed, that's fine. Let this hand, it's very pretty. Let this finger bend just slightly, there we go. Turn your head toward me. And lean your head to this side. Turn your head a little bit. Now, watch the muscles in her neck. How far do you turn a person's neck when you're you know, you never stand a person erect and stiff to the camera. You always turn the shoulder, so you're, there are only exceptions of photographing directly into the camera that I know of, is at the police stations, you can get by with it <laughs> if you fold their hands and do something like this, or if you do something like this, you can photograph directly in the camera. But if, <coughs> excuse me, if you do something along this line, and you have her turn your head toward me just the least little bit, you can come in and get a most beautiful head and shoulder type pose. You have a, a flower or a vase right in here. Do a horizontal head and shoulders type pose, and it'll be beautiful. That's, I would just move in, and I always make, a, oh, probably six or eight different head and shoulders in every session that I do, okay? Okay. I lost my train of thought. You got to keep reminding me, man. I forget these things. I'm getting old. <laughs> as far as the card in your neck, when you turn the shoulders, you can turn it until the card starts to protrude. Then turn it back. It's that simple. Just when it starts to protrude, just turn it back. And that's with male or female. That's how far you turn a person's head until that muscle starts to come out. That's skeletal sternomastoid muscle, yes. What do you do about the wrinkles that she gets in her neck by tipping it back this way? Okay. The wrinkles that she gets in her neck over here, and that is because you're sitting here and the camera's here, and the camera don't see those wrinkles over there. So just keep them away from the neck. 
you, all the wrinkles are on the opposite side of the camera they don't show. When they, if, you, if the camera's over here, then you'd have to do something. But they're over here, so you don't worry about them. Okay? Now, let's have you stand. And we don't, do we have another model back? Let's bring another gal up here. And we'll let you take a little break. Yeah, have her change and and I don't know, someone someone remind me when it's about uh, four fifteen or something like that, because we want to make actual photographs. Four twelve right now. Four twelve. Have her change into whatever you want your prints made in, okay? Because we want to make some prints for the girls. Excuse me, I didn't mean to run over you. Good thing your toe wasn't there. That'd hurt, wouldn't it? I have my bed on roller so I can move it around. And this is going to be a little bit high, but keep in mind we're improvising. If you'll come over to this end of the bed. Now yeah, come back right back about in here. You're Rhonda, right? Mm -hmm. I knew you wouldn't forget, but I forget those things. Come up about right here. And let's try this. We may not be able to do it. See what happens when you put this knee right up there. That's long reach, isn't it? That's all right. Well, let's bear with me. My bed's not quite this high, but bear with me. Lean forward on your hands like this. There we go. Keep your back arched right here. Now, look right out at me. Lean your head just a little. Turn your head toward me. And see, that isn't a bit too high to be sexy, is it? See, that makes a very, very pretty pose. Yeah, it's all right. It'll be fine. Eyes right back at me. Turn your head just the least. Lower your chin just a little. Eyes right through here. Makes a very, very, very cute pose. Normally, I would make this pose in just a teddy, not the other gown. One of the most exciting things that you'll find that men like about portraits is the curvature of a woman's back is exciting to a man. So you want to make several poses that you show this curvature right through here. The back. That's exciting to me. I don't know why it's exciting to me. It's exciting to other men. It's just one of those things, you know, you don't have to expose a gal to make things exciting. So you want to get as many poses with this beautiful curve. See, I get to keep showing her this beautiful. <laughs> you right about that. That's fine. Turn your head just a little. Lower your chin. Just, that's fine. Very, very good. And the eyes are the key right there. That's well. We've got a good fall off. That'll work just fine. Let's make another Polaroid of that. Now, if I look through there, I'm not balanced in composition, so I'm going to bring this in just the least little bit more. That should be fairly close. Perfect. Lower your chin just a little bit more, down a little bit more. Eyes right up at me. That's so oh, very, very good. And we got to have your best come hither expression for us. That's so oh, very good. And we're all set back here, and eyes right out at me, and I want that wicked come here. They're looking good, all people have. There we go. That's fine. Now we pull this thing out of here. Now, from that pose, I kind of follow different patterns. That's not to say that I make the same poses with every person, but I, when I start out, different ages of people, different shapes, different body weights, and so forth. I have a series of poses that I, that I keep with. Now, if you'll climb right up on the table, on your stomach, more or less. Easy for me to say, huh? Drop down on your stomach. Catch your back elbow on the pillow right here. Right about there. Let this hand drop. Let this pillow come out about right there. Bring this hip toward you. There we go. Eyes right out at me. Low your chin, look right out at me, eyes right up at me, that come, oh, that's great, yeah, that's so, that's fine. Again, you're just going from one series right into the next, eyes right back at me, hands and fingers are very, very important, and rings, make sure their rings are always straight. And so, very, very good. This, if a gal is well endowed, this is a good pose for them. If they're well endowed, they want to show them. That's fine. Eyes right out at me. That's well. We're going to run off the background of this Polaroid, but well, that, you know why. We don't have the room to work around too much here. Very, very good. And we're out off our lights. See, when you look at it, you'd recognize it immediately we forgot to move the light. 
Let's cut this off back here again <laughs> so I can see what I'm doing. Now, eyes that back of me? That's not comfortable, is it? No. Easy for me to say, though. That's fine. Now, if you had a soft box just looking there and you did that, you're going to have all the same thing. So now you want to turn it this way, feather a little bit this way, and we've got a nice fall off. Eyes right out at me and lean your head just slightly. That's well. Perfect. And I'll try to hurry here. Very, very good. Eyes right up at me, and we got to wait till they quit shooting here. Our lights will be all fouled up. Uh, so, my gosh, you're getting serious. Uh, there, a little bit more. It's got to her. There we go. Now, just a second, I'm going to do one more thing before I move you. Now, if she's a young gal, what I would have her do is I want you to raise up on your arms like this. I'm going to pull this pillow out. Raise up again, get this arch in the back right here. Look right up at me. Lean your head just at least a little bit. Lower your chin, eyes right up at me. Are we out of Polaroid? Now that's enough Polaroid, isn't it? Yeah. Eyes right through here at me. And now if you look back, we see we're out of balance. We need to balance this empty space back here that you're going to have. And so you've got to have some sort of a prop back in this space. That's great. That looks exciting. Very, very good. Perfect. We get all focused here. Eyes right out of me. Oh, wait. I got a lot of patience. There we go. That's fine. The more. Boy, we got to like that time. Relax. That's hard to do, isn't it? <laughs> You've done a good job. Okay. We're going to let you. Go pick whatever you want some stuff made in. We're going to switch over our camera here to regular film. And let's see, you got to put a slide in that. I think I got a backup here. How many costume changes would you do? A set number do you work with? Approximately 15 to 20. Changes. Take it off. I don't need it. <laughs> you don't know how either? You got a slide in it? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Okay. Okay. Yes. You mentioned you work about three hours on a session. Yes. Well, it's obvious that uh, these poses are tough and these girls get worn down in just a few minutes in those tough poses. How do you keep them going for three hours? Have well, we, t we say that we allow three hours for a session to start with. And uh, actually about an hour, 45 to two hours is about the photographic time because we have a makeup session. We have paperwork time and so on and so forth. So it's an hour and 45 minutes to two hours, really, if they were actually photographing. But we don't do too many hard poses. We really don't. And the poses that we do uh, are really fairly comfortable, except for twist and turning of the head. By the way, the, the reason that we turn and tip the head is for one reason only. Many people don't realize that. But the reason we do that is to balance the head with the shoulders. And that's the only reason that we do that. Rhonda's ready. Okay. What do you got on, Rhonda? Pretty, pretty purple. Let's see what we're going to do with pretty, pretty purple. Let's see. You got a good little figure here. Hey, let's see here. Let's turn this deal about right here and see if we can do one standing and show a little bit more. Uh, you come over this way. Come back here with me. Let's see. Come up about right here and see if you can put that knee up on the table about right there. Turn a little bit more this way. Let's see if we can get you something to stand on here. Just a second here. Someone had my case here. How many exposures do you want to do now? 40 to 50. Stand on that. Now put this knee up. That's about right. Let your knee come out more this way. Very good. Let this hand just touch. There we go. Let this hand lean forward from the waist. Just touch this hand. There we go. That's fine. Again, eyes right out at me and lean your head just a least little bit. That's back some more. Right there we go. Turn your head toward me just a bit. That's good. Very, very good.
See how the light falls off? Again, you need balance and support. Everything has to have a base in photography. Otherwise, it's out of, it don't balance right. Remember what composition is? Simply a balance. Let's put those in there about like that. See what that looks like. Eyes right out at me now. That's fine. Lower your chin just the least. What's his name? <laughs> See, I knew that you'd know that. There we go. Hey, by golly, I think I can revolve my back and get what I want. Here. So, I keep wanting to zoom that lens. Boy, I tell you, once you get used to a zoom lens, it's hard to go back to something else. Zoom lens? Well, they're supposed to retail for $2,200, but you can get them for about thirteen to $1,500, and they're well worth it. They, by the way, are the sharpest lens that they make. They're much sharper than any other RB lens. That's unusual for a zoom, but they are. And so eyes right back out of me, lower your chin just the least a little bit. That's fine, Rhonda. What's his name? Susan. Susan. <laughs> Forgive me. That's all. Eyes right out of me. Very good. Now, just kind of slide over this way and have a seat. Just leave your knee up there. Leave your knee up. Slide over and have a seat. Lean down on this elbow. Right about there. Let this arm come forward. Look right out at me. Right there. Lean your head a bit. That's fine. Oh, chin. Yes, that's great. Very, very, very good. That's fine. If you're not showing, don't worry. That's fine. So, that's good. Perfect. Very, very good. When you're posing your models, you find that the most important dimension in any photograph that you're posing, a gal laying down is the length of her arm from here to here. Depends on length of the arm, what height the pillow, or whether you use a pillow or not with them. Eyes right back at me, Susan. There we go. Is it Susan? Yeah. See, they got me confused. This again is a good picture for a gal that has a good bus line. That's fine. In making this, I need to come over this way. Well, I'll, just a second, I'll rotate my bed that doesn't have wheels on it. Hang on, gal, I don't charge for rides. Now we're going to have to scoot this back about here, probably. Look how nice that light falls off. Can you go back home and work without these things? God, I wish I got a commission off of selling those. That's fine. Lower your chin just a little. Very, very, very good. Now, Susan has a long arm. That don't mean anything wrong with you. This arm looks long. I would take... a boa, and just, there we go. And we've now taken away from that long arm. You don't want any extreme length of flash showing that it's longer than the length of the face, because it'll take over your photograph. Eyes right at me, that's slow. Oh, that's much, much better, that's slow. Lower your chin just a fraction. I like to keep the chin down and the eyes up. That's where we get those sexy expressions that turn the guys on. You certainly want to keep them turned on, don't you, Susan? That's right. Very, very good. That's great. Okay. We'll let you stand a minute. And I just had a horrible thought, but I think I'm all right. Yeah, I lucked out. Okay. I had, I had the F stop right. <laughs> <laughs> Polaroid is at, is at FA, they said 80 film speed, and I use 80 on VPS too. So, anyway, let's see what else we're going to do here. Let's, 
I don't know if I've got the right color bow. Just a second here. No, I don't. We're going to do this. Let's get rid of these. Climb up on the old table. Just climb right up there. Have a seat about right here. Lean up down on this elbow, babe. There we go. And let this hand relax. Let your legs stretch this way. Let this. That's fine. Let this knee. That's fine. Right there. Roll your hip just the least little bit. Keep your arm just the way it is. I'm going to pull a pill and your elbow come toward me just a little bit. There we go. If you aren't careful, they'll fold that elbow underneath them, and that's very, very, very uncomfortable for them. They won't say anything, but they're in pain. So you need to keep that elbow out. Normally, I would do this pose with nothing underneath it. So we're going to do it with a bow on because there's too many eyes in this room. What, how I work that is we have the black makeup robes that they've been wearing in. I have them come out with a black makeup robe around their shoulders without their arms out. They're totally covered. And I'll show you what to do. I'll, I'll have them come to this end of the table and say, crawl up on the table on your stomach. And they'll come up and put your elbows on a pillow. They'll have the robe around them. Then I have them slowly turn up to this position. They still have the robe around them. And then I just start putting on the fur and I keep them covered as much as I possibly can. And we would come in about like this. I'm going to bring this leg forward and let this leg go back. If they have a good line in the rear, then I always try to show the line right through here. And you always want to keep that away from the camera just a little bit so you don't enlarge. If you enlarge a gal's rear, she's not happy with you, unless they request it. Once in a while, you have it requested. That's fine. Bring your hand about to this side. Let this hand this way. No, I can do that. I'm going to do this a different way. Let this hand come underneath. Right there. We're going to slip these off. You're not going to show. If I expose a gal in any way, shape, or form, I let her know that I'm doing it, by the way. If I let a bus show or whatever, even though she's requested it, I'll tell her we're letting your bus show a little bit. So she feels comfortable with you that you're not sneaking a peep or something like that. You always tell them, we're going to let your bus show a little bit in this photograph or so forth. And with what she has on, you keep these little tails coming down about like that. You might bring a couple over about right there to accent a little bit. Bring your head a little bit toward me. Fluff the hair a little bit. Eyes right back at me, and boy, if he was here, I'd have to leave the room. Woo! That's fine. You keep this light low enough to keep the, the light in the eyes, and then you feather it up about like so. Turn your head toward me, and you again balance with some sort of a, a plan or something back in around the briefcase. Right in through there. Eyes right back at me. That's great. Very, very good. And we're going to feather off of that hip just a little bit. Eyes right up through here. That's dangerous, you know, to give a man that expression. That's uh, fine. I wouldn't say that to, in front of a regular customer, but since we're here, we might say a few things we wouldn't normally say. That's fine. Very, very, very good. Eyes right back through here, and we got so serious on me. Just that, right there, that's fine. Right through, perfect. Let your lips close real softly. Let them close a little softer. Think about him. What's his name? You still haven't told me, have you? Let your lips close a little bit softer. A little bit softer, yeah, just all the way. Just right there. I didn't think, oh, get that little twinkle. That's what I want right through there. That's so. Then, if you want, you can come in and make a very, very pretty close up here. Turn your head to this side. Look down with your eyes, 
and make the most beautiful close-up, soft focus, horizontal type print, different than the guy down the streets making them all vertical. Who makes horizontal head and shoulders? We do, because we sell the heck out of them. But look in the screen how pretty that is. Now, if you come into head and shoulders on that, can you zoom in on it, just the head and shoulders? Zoom in on it. Now, now watch that print. Everyone look so they can see what he's got there. And you see the blank behind it? I can't see what I'm doing, you'll have to tell me. But if you get this about right there, down, see what a plant does for you? See how you balance it, how it was empty before? That's how you make your portraits look different than anyone else's. But you see, that makes a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful photograph. That's why you need all kinds of things to balance composition. Again, keep in mind, composition is what's pleasing to the eye. That's all you have to worry about, composition. I'm not talking about convention prints. I'm talking about saleability. But you see how beautiful that really is. OK, let's make, a, let's make that. That's all pretty. Let's just go ahead and make that. There we go. We got it all set up. Now, there's one thing we need to change, and you have to watch everything. And I hope you all realize that when you're talking and doing all we're doing, that we miss a few things up here. But I hopefully wouldn't miss that here. Just leave that hole in it there. Beautiful bay. That is exciting. If I can find the bulb right there, just a least little bit of a kink. A little, that's what I wanted. See that? Just that she put a twinkle in her eye, just enough to, to. Okay, let's see. Let's let's have you slide off and stand. Keep that around you. I got your your bra straps down. Slide off, stand, and turn your back, and hook your bra straps back up, and come back here. And let's get the briefcase again. Step back a second. As far as the number of poses you can make, it's totally just, you know, it's endless. I had a model in one time and photographed a whole day just to see if I could run out of things to do, and we didn't. We just kept going on, no, no, no. Just come right on over this way, step up on there. Turn a little bit this way. Put this knee up on here. And turn just a little bit toward me, right about there. That's fine. Now, just let me have the fur a second. And come up over your arms. Come down this way. Let this arm come up and just touch about right there. And so, let this arm come up and touch about right there and off. Oh, I hit you in the chin, forgive me. You can hit me back later on, I don't care. Just let this hand come up about right here. Let this hand lower, just let your arm relax. Very good. Normally, again, we don't have stuff underneath for the show. I have them made. That's one thing you have to buy from me if you want them. And I'm, I, I, I keep stressing, I don't try to sell from the platform. But I found those in Vegas, and the manufacturer quit making them. I talked the manufacturer into making them, and he will only make them at six dozen at a time. I go through about 12 a year myself, and I have people that do the same thing, and so I buy them uh, at six dozen at a time. They cost you $140, and uh, the, about the only place you can get them is for me. The first one I bought, I bought it in Las Vegas, and I paid $295 for it in a retail store in Vegas. So it's a pretty good buy. But they just won't make them except in six dozen quantities. That's fine. Turn just the least about right there. Turn your head toward me, way around, lower your chin down right there, eyes right up at me. That's great. That's slow. They cost me about $125 a piece, so I'm not getting wrench off of them, people. I don't believe in sticking the, the trade for I think when you 
have something photographic if you can help your fellow photographer out. That's how I learned everything I know. I did go through books, but I learned more after I got out than when I went through, but that gave me my start. But I learned from people giving, not selling. Lower this shoulder just a nice little bit. Lower your chin just a little bit. That's fine. This is a picture that you can make as daring as you want. It's very conservative here. But if a gal wants to show her bust, you can show one bust, both, both busts. You can do beautiful things with, with showing the bust on this particular pose. Eyes right out at me. Boy, you get serious. That's fine. Very, very good. <coughs> Let's see if we can get a little bit. I would put a little base on the print. I would put a plant back here that would stick up about this high. How often do you have to maybe call in for retouching the makeup or hair? Does that ever happen? No. It usually holds pretty well through the session. Don't move anything, babe. We've got a little bit of problem. Not you, me. Kind of lean toward me just a little. Lower the shoulder just the least. Beautiful. That's excellent. Very good. That's exciting. Eyes right up through here. You're doing great. I'll let you smile with that. Come on a little bit more. Though. That's fine. Very, very good. Okay. We'll let you take a break. And we'll bring Rhonda. You get your straps up. Let's see what she's got on. Hey, she got a teddy on. Let's make one with a fur with you. Come right on over. We're going to make one right on with this fur. Come right back here with me. Stand up on the briefcase here. Turn this away. Put the weight on this hip. Raise this foot up so you're just touching your toe. And get your balance. Yes, that's why you use so many of them, the inside of it. You can clean the inside, hand clean them, but after a while you've got to throw them away. The, the uh, marabou doesn't clean. It gets matty. Now, you can come in. Just take hold of that in both hands right there. You, I again make this without anything on. And you go something about like so. Look right out at me, lower your chin. Now down, 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 down. We're gonna make that just like it is. But if if she has nothing on, it's a little more exciting. That's fine. Very good. Again, you need something back in this area here, about this tall to balance. We'll leave that there, but but you need more to little height there, probably to balance better. Lower your chin just a little bit more on that. That's fine. That's Lower your chin just slightly around it. That's beautiful. Just look right down where you're looking. Very, 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 very pretty. That's fine. Very good. So I've got to get a load of, who's got a roll of film? Someone got a roll of film here? One twenty. Dale, why don't you use a hair light or separation light? Don't need it. That's simple. The fewer lights you use, the happier your customer will be. I'll guarantee you, if you use a hair light, that you'll get more complaints for the hair light than I'll get with no hair light. Because a hair light gets, it gets you into trouble more times than it, than it gets you out of trouble. Nobody says, I can't, my hair looks so dark. Never, ever have a complaint. Now, if you're using 
if you use a real dark background, then that might be another story. But most of my backgrounds are light enough that I keep a separation. I don't let hair merge with the background, but all I have to do really is raise my light higher and get a good separation. I never ever, I don't even own a hair light. But if, if you're using a real dark background, then you've got to raise your, your uh, main light higher to get more light in the hair. But soft focus, remember that you're lightening shadows with soft focus too, or diffusion, whatever you do. With your lights, a regular 16-inch reflector with a set of barn doors milk down would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, light is light, by the way. It doesn't make any difference what light you use or what brand you use. A light is something for you to control. That's what makes you a photographer. A camera, I use an automatic wind camera. That's because it's easier for me. I'd hate to go back to all that lever action and so forth because I'm concentrating on other things. But that's only nice for me. It don't make any better picture. The lights that you use, a light is what you use to create what you want, the effect and the look of what you want. You can use 20 lights, you can use one light. You use lights to create the modeling effect that you want, period. That's all lights for. You adjust your exposure to the amount of light that's there. You do not use lights for exposure. You adjust your exposure to the amount of light that's there. Turn your body just a little bit, about right there. Let's let this come up on your shoulder. Get this about right in here. Let's go ahead and just strap this tight. Let me come off your elbow, you're gonna be covered. This now. Since this is for you, it's better if it don't show. With your right hand, just hold that up on your shoulder. Let me get to the other side so I can see what I'm doing. Lower your chin just a little bit, that's fine. A little bit more yet, down, that's fine. You come in on a close-up on this, and this is really very, very, very pretty. That's excellent, babe. Just very, very good. Stay just as you are. Think a little bit about him instead of what's going on out here. That's perfect. Very, very good. That's fine. Now, can you zoom in on that and get just a head and shoulder, Tom? Steve, can you zoom in on that and just, yeah, you got it right there. You got it pretty much right there. Back up just a little, back up a little bit more. Now, right back right there. Right there in a vertical print, you'll have a seller. I guarantee you that can go in the office, that can go into anything. Look down with you, look down, lower your chin a little bit more. There we go. You get a vertical print on that and you get it balanced with a prop or something to, to break up that background and you'll have a beautiful, beautiful... That's fine, you can relax a minute. Deal? Yes? In Kansas, is there a problem with wine makeup? Yes. Yes. Okay. Every state has a different law on cosmetology. Kansas requires that you are a licensed cosmetology, cosmetologist in order to apply makeup unless you do it at no charge. If you do it at no charge, then you can get by with it, as long as you don't advertise it. Uh, we had a photographer, ex-partner of mine, Roy Meyer, opened a glamour studio, which are a makeover studio, where they're doing the hair and all this, that, and the other, and advertised the heck out of it. Boy, they closed it down, bingo, because he didn't have anyone that was licensed to do hair and makeup. So he says, hey, I'll solve that. I'll get a gal to come in and do it. So he pays a gal to come in that's a licensed cosmetologist, and he opens back up, and bingo, they close him back down. You can't have a licensed cosmetologist come in in the state of Kansas and apply makeup in your business unless she has a chair that's open to the public. So now he had to, to get a cosmetologist down the street that he could send people down to to do all this, and it got to be a hassle, so he just closed it and forget, forgot about it. Yeah. Yes. I clarify that. As far as opening the chair, what, what their main concern is is the cleanliness and 
that no diseases are being passed around. That's one reason why the cosmetologists are licensed. That's their main concern is the, the disease factor of, of transmitting it around. But it, it, you have to check on your own state, and I'm sure that uh, Tom can tell you what, what Nebraska is, but that's Kansas laws, and, and we get around it by we don't advertise makeup, and we apply it and we don't charge it. We don't say that your, your makeup session is included or anything else, so we just do it and, and forget it. In the past, I have been sued twice by people over makeup and lost both times, so you're going to lose if you get sued, uh, you know. They have to prove negligence, but if you're if you don't have a license and you apply it, that's negligence. And so I lost both times. But uh, anyway, don't advertise it and don't charge for it, and you generally can get by with it. Thirteen tail. Okay, we'll let you take a, a break a second, and we'll bring the Susan back up here, and we'll get you just stay there, and we'll get you again in just a minute here. Yeah, I'll come over there and put it. Put your robe back on. Let's see here. Let me talk to you just a minute here. We're going to run just a little bit over, and if you're going to leave, you can leave, but I want to make sure we tell you some things. I was, someone was going to ask me, what do I do with heavy women? And I do a lot of heavy women. I probably... The heavier the gal is, and quote, unquote, the more she's been hit with an ugly stick, the better your ardor is going to be. And we all laugh and so forth, but that's true. And it's easy to make a heavier woman look beautiful. Number one, step number one. You turn your table at that angle. Come right up on the table. Come right up here. We're just going to show them you're not heavy. Don't get me wrong. Lean over on this pillow for me. Let me tell you a little bit about body language. You're really photographing body language. Every time that you photograph a gal and you're working with a gal, unless she is totally at ease with you, she will put her knees like this. This is because mother told her to keep her knees together. Now, you can laugh about that, but that's body language. And the thing that you do when you're photographing is you never keep those knees together because if he looks at this, you may make a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture of this gal and her knees are together. He's going to look at it and he's going to say, I don't like it, and he doesn't know why. Because the knees together say no. So first of all, you always either come this way and let this knee drop or you go the reverse. You always open the pubic area. Now, in body language, pubic area is the part that you guard of your body, male or female, from male or female. If you're sitting, talking to someone, and you have your legs crossed comfortably, and someone walks up on the group that you're not comfortable with, you will reverse and close your pubic area off, male or female, from that person, because your body's saying, I don't know this person, I don't trust this person. Has nothing to do with sex. Body language, you always close off your pubic area, okay? But in here, you always make sure you keep it open, because mothers didn't realize that kids were smart, and they knew that, that actually everything has an opposite and equal reaction. If mother told the gals to keep their knees together, they also weren't smart enough to realize that the reverse is true too, you know, so every action has an opposite <laughs> and equal reaction. I shouldn't say that, but it's true. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> mother never figured daughters were that smart. Anyway, with a heavier person, keep the hips behind the frontal plane or the, the face and shoulder area. The heavier the person, the heavier the person, the higher you raise them. Now, you see the hip here and the shoulder height? With a heavier person, this hip's going to be up here. So now, I don't know if I have enough pillows here. Let's see what happens. Raise it up again, please. Put an elbow over on here. Now, if you look from back here, you see this hip looks smaller than it did before. So you keep a heavier person 
the front shoulder and the face closer to the camera, the hips further away from the camera, and the higher the shoulder, the smaller that hip looks. And you do that in any pose you're making. Also, you block heavy people with props. If I had a heavy gal standing, I might let uh, uh, boas or something hang down and cover part of the body, or I might have her standing next to a chair that you only get this much of her instead of this much of her. So you simply block parts of the body in the standing poses. You also photograph as much as you can standing. Now listen to this. This is very, very important, and this is true with photographing head and shoulders or anything else, whether they have their clothes on or not. If you're uncomfortable, relax. If you have a person stand, you shift the weight to the back, take the weight off the front, you automatically have a better head and shoulders than someone sitting like this because a heavier person's shoulders come up. So if you photograph heavier people standing, you get a better result. Also, if you photograph heavier people leaning forward slightly, when you lean forward, you have to put your chin out. It tightens the neck muscles. So little tips like this is what you use in working with heavier people. Heavier people I photograph in darker lingerie and against darker backgrounds. So I let some of the body merge into backgrounds. Uh, I use more light ratio. I bring my light around the face further so that I bring the shadow side of the face and I make the, the face look thinner. Uh, I use a light a little bit higher on heavier people than, than what I do on, on normal people. I may even sacrifice a little bit of light in the eyes sometimes. By raising the light, you create shadows under the chins and you get rid of double chins and so on. So there's lots of things that you do with heavier people that make them look beautiful. You also do not use teddies with heavier people. You use long flowing robes. You don't use anything that accentuates the hip line and, and teddies that cut in like bathing suits and so forth. You always use longer gowns. Are you, if they want a teddy, you use a teddy that isn't farm fitting or you take boas and, and come around and let them hold. Let them hold something like this that, that and I, by the way, let me tell you something else I do. On the furs, I cut them in half and make them longer, not in half. I cut them in three quarter and then sew two together and I make it longer for heavier people. I make boas longer for heavier people because it takes more to reach around them. But you must cater to them because you get loads and loads of women that want to be beautiful and glamorous and you make them beautiful and glamorous and man, they're a friend. The largest order we ever had was $5,000. It was from a very heavy gal, largest single order. Another gal has spent probably fifteen dollars to $20,000 with us on one sitting. She keeps coming back and ordering more. I don't know how she goes through these, but every time she gets a different boyfriend, she must buy another wall <laughs> portrait for her. And she's, she's not even from our area. She's way out of town. But, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sure. Which one are you talking? Hold it up. Oh, the one standing. I would try to avoid doing that particular pose with her, but if I did it, I have boas that are bigger. You can buy boas that are probably this big around, and you use those instead of these, and it covers much, much more. Okay, but I mean, would you, would you show the same amount of leg and buttock as there if she said, I like that and I want something like that and that's beautiful? Are you going to try and talk her out of it, or are you going to, are you going to work with her and, and give her that? No. I will, I, if she says that I definitely want that one, I would do it, but I would do it with a bigger boa. A bigger boa takes away a lot of flesh. And you'd, where are you going to wrap that boa, though? I mean, I, that's what I want to know. Because you don't show me a lot of, a lot of bodies, Hand me the print. Remember one thing that he told you back in the beginning when he looks through the album with them? That he does the simulation or whatever that would work best for them. She's speaking of this print right here. Would you hold that for me? I hate to block you, you're so beautiful, but for a short period of time, bear with us. If this boa was bigger around, it would cover down to about here and up about here. Also, 
if it's bigger around and longer, it would cover down here. So we're still going to show a curvature of the buttocks, but we're going to show a curvature with not a wide expanse of flesh, but a narrower expanse of flesh. By the way, another thing, I, it's hard to hurry. You know, normally we give a lot longer program, a day and a half, and we said we could get this in to, to, to one day. But normally, when you photograph anyone, you always want to keep the weight distribute it on a back foot or on one foot and keep one, the show leg, always keep the toe up in the air because it makes the muscles in the leg become beautiful. Never photograph a gal that you're going to show legs flat footed. Heavy or, or thin, always raise the toe so that you, and then, then the leg becomes very, very beautiful. But did I answer your question? Oh, very definitely. Let me tell you something that, that we as the general public don't know. We've learned a lot about photographing women over the last 10, 12 years. Heavier women have much more loving husbands, number one. I don't know why, but they do. You get much more comments from husbands with, with heavier gals. They are much more loving. They're much more affectionate. They care much more. They express their feelings much more openly than the average man. So don't kid yourself. Women are heavy, maybe remaining heavy because of knowing that fact. So don't kid yourself and feel sorry for them. Their guys love them more than the, than the thin gal uh, and the most attractive gal. So don't ever put them down and say, well, God, who could love that? They're probably better loved than you are if you're a woman. And yeah, that's, that's, what that's, that's really true. Okay, let's make a couple more. If you've got questions, I know it's about 5 o'clock. If you've got questions about anything, ask your questions. We're going to keep going because uh, these gals want some pictures for what their own. Do, what do you yes. do with dimple thighs? How do you keep them dimpled off? Standing, but yeah. like if you're sitting like this. They're sitting like this. What are you referring to as the dimple? Over in here, the hollow? Yeah, the cellulite type. Of okay. Hollow. All right. If you got if cellulite, okay. With cellulite, first of all, by soft focus, you eliminate a lot to start with. Secondly, if she was sitting like this and this was not an attractive area of her leg, I'd throw some pillows in here, or I'd throw a boa in there. This isn't the right color boa, but I'd put a boa in there. These are used a lot of times. I use a lot of little pillows. Heavier women, I use a lot of pillows with. Let's say that, lay right back down here and put your elbow right here. Let's say if this gal's real heavy and her legs are big and she wants to show a little bit of, of bare flesh and so forth here, I put pillows along in here. I stack pillows up and, and different things, you know. Scoot your knee back just a little bit and get some pillows in here like this. Already we're cutting down on her size. So we do a lot of little things that, that make the amount of body showing much less. And again, see, she'll always put her knees back together. Yes. Um, you say you do about 15, 18 outfit changes. I mm -hmm. have people take like five, ten, sometimes ten minutes to change a robe from one to the next. I was wondering how you managed to get all that in and get done in the same day. You do a lot of praying every once in a while. First of all, I never let them choose the outfits. I always choose the outfits, number one. Secondly, I, if a gal is taking 15 minutes for every change. I don't do as many changes with her <coughs> because I'm on a schedule. I photograph it. We have a gal comes in at 9 o'clock every day, one comes in at 1 o'clock, one comes in at 3.30, and one comes in at 6. I have to stay on schedule. And whenever the, I'm still, I can work on the sitting for half an hour or so while she's doing makeup and so forth. So the gal that comes in at 3.30, I can really work till 4 o'clock with that gal. But after that, I'm holding up someone else. So. I'll tell them to allow three hours, and, and we just fit it into it. And once in a while, you do get that. Uh, but I really don't hint it too awfully much unless you let them start deciding clothing and so forth. Do you have mirrors where they change? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure do. And a lot of them change jewelry every pose and so on and so forth. But, but I kind of establish the pace. I work very, very fast. I think I maybe establish a faster pace of work because I do work very, very fast. Uh, I don't work slow and I don't drag and I'm, I have no indecision. I'm, uh, 
I bang, bang, click, click, and keep going because I, it's kind of like driving a car. You don't, you've done it so much, you don't even stop to think. So I, I establish a pretty hefty flow. I also play music, but I don't play the real slow, 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 slow music that gets them in a slow mood. I pay, play an average pace of music. So maybe that all helps. I really can't answer that. Because I, you know, I really once in a while have it, but it doesn't come up very often. They know they want to wear a lot of those outfits too, because they're excited. I bring in a lot more than what he'll use, but they're excited, so they're not going to drag too long because they want to see a lot of outfits. They want to wear them. Let's see here. Let's do a boa of you here and see if we can come up with something here kind of nice for you. <laughs> I prefer small jewelry. Uh, you, we suggest on the telephone when we tell them how to, how to prepare that they bring small jewelry, necklaces, earrings, pearls, especially anything he's given you. We also, t one other thing that we didn't tell you, there's a lot we didn't tell you, but uh, let's let this drop in about right there and let this leg drop back just a little bit. Let's come over this way. Let's make you want something. And let it drop down. Right about there, turn your head toward me. We have them bring, and we mention to them that if there's a favorite cologne that a guy likes on you, we work with moods and feelings, it's good to bring the cologne that he likes on you. That's for two reasons. Now, everyone's going to say, oh, and ah, when I tell you that, but this is true. Bodies have odors. And I don't like to smell odors any more than anyone else. And I love the gals that wear perfume. I, I won't say any more than that, but that's true. The less clothing you, that's on a body, the more body odors you get. So we encourage them to bring perfume, and that's a little bit nicer. And it does create a nicer feelings with them. You have to talk very blunt, uh, very blunt when, we're, when we're doing this, and that's true. Well, I just find that if they have cologne on, they're better to work with. Right out at me, lean your head just a little the other way. There we go. Eyes right back toward me, and that's going to be as sexy as can be. That's fine. Well, I, this, this really throws me having another light on. This is a little hard to do when you're not working with your regular props and so forth to end up with something nice for these gals with modeling for us. But we'll come up with something here that looks good and sexy and exciting and get your guy to attack. No, we better not say that. And so. That's great. That's wonderful. Perfect. Just beautiful eyes right up at me. Oh, come on, love. that's great. Very, very good. That's fine. Let's have you stand a minute. Where's that chair? We had a chair, that Victorian chair back there. Let's bring that in here. Let's see if I can scoot this out of our way here. Come in about right here. Put this knee about like that. Just stand about like so. Yeah, that's fine. Lean forward a little bit more. Curve your back. Let this in. Lean your head back this way. Get that out of your face. That doesn't even tickle good, does it? That's fine. Let this in. You can do a lot of things with a chair. Eyes right out at me, lower your chin just a little bit, lean your head, that's fine. Stay just as you are, I'm going to turn you just a little bit, and I don't charge for rides either. And so, very good. Thank you. 
three quarter length. I'd do very few feet showing. There's no very there's very little interest in feet. I don't show feet in hardly anything. Eyes ah, right out at me. There we go. Gosh, you're so pretty. I can't hardly focus the camera. There. Eyes right back toward me, and you go serious again. Uh, that's there we go. That's fine. That's all. The younger the person you photograph, the more smiling you'll probably be. Uh, nothing against being young. It's great to be young. <clears throat> it's more fun being old, but <coughs> you can straighten up a minute. We're going to let uh, <coughs> our next gal come up here, and we'll let you step over there. you find me a glass of water, Dwarf? Come over this way. Put right here to lean forward. Come right in about there. Take all that right there. <coughs> Take all that right there. Now, turn your head toward me. That's fine. I'm going to turn you slowly, just a little bit. There we go. That's fine. Right about there, lower your chin, just a little. Look right back out at me. Do you have any trouble with strap marks when you first start from what they were wearing? Sometimes, but she, she softens those with makeup. They sell makeup that'll do that, and, and they've, they've got, Cricos um, have got makeup back there. I don't, I don't mean uh, tan marks. <laughs> I know strap marks, but okay. they can soften them with a, uh, with a, a makeup if they're, they show too much. The w ones that we get the worst marks on is when they wear these half-length hose and so forth. You get a lot of those, and sometimes you're starting out, you get those. All right, their eyes right back at it. That's uh, fine. And now our fill light's going to be definitely in the wrong place. Let's use a reflector on that. Someone help me hold the reflector. Where did it go to? That about right, like so. Let's see if that's out of the camera. I think it will be. And if a gal doesn't mind and wants to show more, this is a good one to do with just the boa, no teddy on. Back out just a little bit there. Perfect. Beautiful. Eyes right up at me again. That is so you got serious again. Right there we go. That's fine. Now just a second, stay just as you are. And uh, just a slight variation in that is lean your head this way. Right about there. Shrug your shoulder a little higher. Look right back at me with your eyes. Eyes right up at me. And you got an altogether different effect. That's great. Very, very good. The kind of peeping over the shoulder effect, that's very good. We're all set here. Don't move anything in just a second here. Let's see if I can get at least a little there, right in there. Right there. there. Are you hiding your mouth in this pose? In this particular pose, yes. Lower your chin just a little. Eyes peeping right directly back at me. That's sexy as can be. Perfect. Very, very good. And when you've hidden the mouth, there's no expression. So all is coming out of the eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see, let's have you stand a minute. Come right over to me here. Stand whoop, right about here. Put this foot up in here. Kind of lean down on this elbow. Put this hand on your hip about right there. That's fine. This would not be the teddy that I would use for this pose, but this is a very cute pose. It's a very sexy pose. That's fine. Just kind of lean down. Lean there. We go. Get your hand relaxed. And since we're using that teddy, let's see if we can make it look kind of nice with the bow. Yeah, let it in with the bow. There. That's fine. There we go. That's fine. Right about there. That's great. Eyes right there. That's fine. That's 
fine. Now, you see this muscle here? That's the muscle that tells us, hey, something's not right. You see that muscle? So let's turn your head back just a little bit. Right there. Okay. Now, I haven't got her head turned the way I want it, but I got rid of the muscle. What's that mean? That means I got to turn chair to get her turned because I don't want that muscle sticking out. Now I'm back where I wanted, and we're muscle just bring your head back just a little up. Right there. That's the eyes right up at me. Very good. We're about right right there. Yeah, that's fine. Now we're gonna have to use this again. You wanna come over here and about right there. It won't because it's not going to overpower the other one. Yes. Can't zoom. I got to back up. Stay there. I won't run over you. Very good. Eyes right back of me. Lower your chin just a little bit. That's perfect. Very, very good. That's beautiful. Kurt was wondering if you were even down there. On, on how many you're taking of each one? I have no idea. He thought maybe you took more of this one. So. Okay. We're going to bring the other gal back now. Let's bring. We didn't bring a shirt. Did we bring a shirt? Go get that shirt. I think we can do this. Slip this on. See if we can hide you underneath. You have an arm back there. Gonna just keep her reaching. There we go. Yeah, so come around this way. Come over to this side. Turn a little bit. Put this foot up in the chair. Lean down on this arm. Let this hand come up about right there. Now, if I can get this to come in with that. Just a little bit down. There we go. Eyes right back up to there. That's fine. You're not going to tell me his name, are you? That's good. This gives you a good hip line, and yeah, I can't really do exactly the way I want it because of the front of the teddy she's going to have. If you're doing this, you usually do it without anything under it. It isn't necessary to show anything, but the stomach will show a little bit. That's fine. Very, very, very good. Yeah. Oops, excuse me, I ran over somebody. Stay just about like you are, baby. I'm going to pull this out. I always keep a leather jacket there, and I'm not into leather and chains. Don't get me wrong, and I don't photograph leather and chains, but younger gals like a black leather jacket, and you can make some very, very cute things with a black leather jacket. Eyes right out at me. That's so right there. Very good. Beautiful. That's great. Now, Let's have you step down. This isn't type chair. I'm not going to make this, but if you set like this, and just about like this, go ahead and set like that. I want to show them. If you can find an old ice cream parlor chair that's open in here, and you have a cute teddy on, you have her set like that, they'll buy that every time. They kind of love to set that way on the back of an ice cream chair. 
So just real little simple. Now you don't keep them directly onto the camera like I have. You turn the chair a little bit to one side, but have them sitting like that, straddling kind of ice cream chairs. They have back coming in so they can get their legs a little closer together. But that always sells. That's that's a real popular thing. Okay, let's have you stand again. I'm gonna bring the bed back in here for one more. I'm going to have you come over and have a seat right here like this. Lean in about like this for me. See what happens. There we go. Let this come forward. Just bring him up right about there. It's fine. We can't. Well, we can maybe use that shirt. Let's catch a button. If you stay right there, we'll get in here. Yeah, we got a good fall off. We'll turn this back on for this one. Eyes right out at me, and we just burned out a bulb, didn't we? But we'll still fly, so. Eyes right out through here, right there, unless that's off. No, it's on, there we go. Lower your chin just the least little bit, that's fine. Very good. Perfect. Eyes right up to here. Very, very good. Yes, a little bit perfect. Very good. Keep unplugging the microphone. Yes. They pick their outfits today, but I normally pick the outfits. And, and you can come up, we got tons, of, we got a good supply up here, but they picked what they wanted to wear today. Come back this way. We, go ahead. I'm gonna do one more. I sell a, the thinner the girl, the more teddies you sell, the heavier the girl, the more longer robes you sell. We sell an awful lot of boas, we sell an awful lot of the white furs, uh, we sell some shirts. Uh, uh, I don't think that there, it depends on, on what you get in, in the photograph. You can give me five pieces of lingerie and I can still sell just as many poses because it's up to you what you create in that, that outfit. Come on back this way. I have a jean jacket, and I do a lot of uh, jean jackets with bare rears. I'll show you a pose in a minute. Come right over this way, have a seat right here, just sit right up on there. Come back on both elbows. Bring this leg up about right here. Just stay about like that. We're gonna turn you a little bit more here. your head toward me. Right about there. That's fine. I wouldn't do this in that shirt. Let's slip this off. Let's take the shirt off. Stand up, take it off. Now I'll do the same thing. That's fine. Now just kind of go as far as you can then. So let this hand open up. You want to make sure that you always keep the fingers open. The women have a tendency to make fists or close their fingers. They're not really making a fist, but they close their fingers. That also in body language will turn a guy off real quickly. Eyes right back at me, that's fine. Turn your head back this way just a little bit, a little bit right there, about there, that's fine. Lower your chin just a little, that's well. 
this table's making her stretch a little bit too much, and we're not going to get a relaxed neck, and that's because of the, we've got her at such a, an angle here, but I think I can get it without showing it. Lower each end. <coughs> there we go. See our fall off again off of this leg? And this thing here, you can't tell anything with it on. But you see the fall off there, the, how nice the fall off is? That's all. Very good. Hides that out of me again. Just perfect. Very good. Now just kind of roll this way just a little bit slowly. Right there. Let that leg stay back. Stay just as you are. Let that arm come back. Just roll a nice little bit. bit this way and look down. Very good. Very good, that's fine. Perfect, very good. No, I'd go back, I'd back the TV up and get a little more leg. I'd show a little bit more like I'm, I'm actually showing back down the butt right here. Okay, let's have a big hand for our models. We're all done with them. You did a great job. And we'll work out. We're going to send you some of the prints and so forth. They modeled today for just the prints, and I think that's gracious of them to do so. They both did very, very well. We'll take a few minutes here to answer any questions you might have uh, about anything. And yes. Beg your pardon? Size of that uh, reflector there, or the stopwatch. This is a 9 by 36, I believe, isn't it? Isn't that right? That's right. 9 by 36. If I was buying, the next time I buy, I would get the one with the ears on it. It's a lot more expensive, almost twice as much. But with soft focus, if you aren't careful, you'll get a little flare out of the edge of them. And with that lip that sticks out, the overhang, uh, you don't get that. Any other questions? Anything on sales? Anything on anything that we can tell you about whatsoever? Do you prefer that side over a square? Oh yes, definitely. Square, you cannot control the light. Dale? Yes? I notice on a lot of your prints, uh, you've got excellent lighting on your subject, and then the light fall off in the back. It's just very minimal, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's good separation there. What kind of working distance are you working with there? I mean, like here, it looks like we had a lot of light going back in the background. This is not, I, I hope you realize this is not ideal working conditions and so forth. I work a little bit further away from the background than what we did here today. And uh, light falls off, uh, the further back, the faster it falls off. And yet, if you have more light in the center, the edges will fall off more in proportion too. So it falls off natural by itself. So now, the light you're using in the background is just whatever just whatever spills off of this, off, right? mm -hmm. unless we light it. Now some of those have a lighted background, of course. Backlit window light up there. You're talking about keeping the light off of your diffuser. How are you going to keep away from that? That doesn't. It it has a a effect that the light stays there. It just doesn't come forward. Uh, I can't answer that because it's going directly into the camera, but it will not affect your diffuser. It does not go into the camera. Apparently, the camera's far enough back that it doesn't doesn't record in the camera. On that window light, then your key is coming back, coming from there. From, from there, and that's your key. And that that amount of light, if you read the meter, turn the meter toward the background, right the background, it reads F8, the same as my main light reads You're F8. Still using just reflector for your fill. I don't even use a fill on just, on the. Just Just backlit. When I'm doing the silhouettes. Now, where, where it's backlit over there, then I'm using lights in proportion. Now, see that one up there that is real burn up? Mm -hmm. That one is when I had my. That's what I'm talking about. All right. That was out of proportion. That was set at F11 by mistake. We'd tore down the setup and set it back up, and, I'd, and we'd mess with the power pack, and I caught it 
as soon as the thing came back from the lab, and it was too strong. It was F11 instead of F8. It should be like the one over here, the furthest to this end. But the gal liked it. It should be like this one here. It should be like that. More like that. Yeah. But that was it was at F11 instead of F8. The plug was in the power back row. But like the, the non the non uh, silhouette one there, the uh, heavy backlight. Mm -hmm. You've got light in front. That's yes, really yes. Light. I have the one light in front and no reflector on there. Yes. You, about how big is your camera room? You, know, you mentioned here that you're going to lose a lot of light. It's not like your camera room. So okay, I, I use two camera rooms, and my camera rooms are basically 17 foot wide, something like that, 15 to 17 foot wide. One's 20 foot long, and one's about uh, oh 25 foot long. I have a very, very low ceiling. I'm photographing in a basement. I have a very, very low ceiling, less than eight foot. And it's hard for me to do standing up because I get my ceiling so much of the time. So I have to raise my camera real high and shoot down as much as I can. So you get a lot of bounce light off the yes. wall. Mm -hmm. If there are no other questions, I thank you for giving us the opportunity. If, if you get home and you can't remember what I said or you have questions, if you call, we'll try to, to help you anytime. We'll answer any questions we can anytime. If you call me, call at 9 o'clock or 1 o'clock. That's the only time that I take calls. Otherwise, I'm photographing, and I always have between 9 and 9.30 or quarter to 10 that she's doing makeup, and then at 1 o'clock, she does makeup from about 1 o'clock to 1.30 or a quarter till. So I have that time to answer. So if you want to talk to me on the phone, Call me at either 9 o'clock or 1 o'clock. I'm bad at answering letters because I very seldom get set down at the desk and so forth. So if I can help you anyway at any time, call me on the phone and I'll be glad to do so. I thank you for being such a good audience and thank you for Dolores and, and all. And we hope that we've given you at least one idea to go home and, and play with. And because we do it this way doesn't mean it's the only way. It's our way, not the only way. What we say is not, not gospel. It works for us. It will work for you the same as it works for us. It is not the only way to do it. So you do whatever you want to do. Take what the best of what you think we do and apply it to yours. If you're going to make a drastic change of anything that we've told you today, don't make a drastic change overnight. Ease into it. If you're going to start using transparencies, don't just cut everything off and start. Start with one thing. If you're, if you're doing General purpose work, start with children. That's easy to start with if you're going to switch transfers. Don't just switch everything all at once. Start with one thing and ease into changes. Don't make major changes and upset your boat. You'll be sorry if you do. You ease into any major changes you make. But if you've learned anything today, take it home and start practicing it tomorrow. Don't wait two weeks or you'll forget it and you won't never change and you'll never benefit from anything we've said today. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. And from the PP of A, we have two merits to award to you. I'm sure you, you need those quite badly, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Don't go. <laughs> You'll get your master's soon, that way. <laughs> I've got. I've got that many years ago. <laughs> sure. Okay.